Hey guys, I'm so happy that you're joining me once again here at Heartbeat Christian Academy. And you might know, but we are busy speaking about prayer in Christian basics too. And I'm happy that you're joining me. And I'm sure today we're going to discover some new things as the Holy Spirit just leads us into the full truth of God's Word. Here's the banking details if you want to partner with us. I always give that and supply the opportunity of partnership. And then also there's the contact details. If you need to contact us or contact the ministry, you are always welcome. So we are talking about prayer. And uh, we've been speaking about prayer uh, in the previous few lectures. We're dealing with prayer. And I really trust that your prayer life is starting to develop and that God is leading you into a deeper and more intimate prayer life and relationship with Him. And that this lecture and these series of lectures here in Christian Basics 2 that they are really going to have a permanent life-changing effect on your life. I know for myself, as I've been ministering this and teaching this course for, for a few years, it always challenges me to a deeper relationship with God and to a more committed prayer life. And I hope it does the same to you. So let's get into this. As you know, if you're a Heartbeat Christian Academy student or you're a Passion for Christ student, you probably know that you are busy working on your certificate in Christian service. And this is one of the subjects. And today we're talking about lecture three. And this is the second part, part two of the forms of prayer. And just to recap you, we are doing eight lectures on prayer. You can find them in your notes or in your workbook. But what we did in the previous lecture was we started this conversation. Uh, that We spoke about your personal devotional time. We spoke about family devotion. We spoke about prayer in the church. We spoke about prayer in home cells. We spoke, spoke about prayer retreats. And we also spoke about all night prayer. So why did we split it here? I mean, why are we uh, splitting the course here? And, and why, why is the author uh, and the creator of the curriculum splitting it? Because all of these things are so important that it's better to take your time and do it slowly and go through it than to rush it all in one lecture or in one session. Now, we the next points that we are going to be talking about is truly life-changing. And you might have guessed what it is as we get into that. We are talking about, number one, fasting and prayer. We're going to be talking about some biblical examples, the importance of fasting, the process of fasting, God's response to sincerity, the pra practical results, forgiveness and healing. And then the second topic we're going to be talking about is waiting on the Lord, meditation and prayer and enjoying God's presence. I can only say, wow, wow, wow. When you hear the word fasting, you might have something come to mind. Maybe you've had some experience with fasting. Maybe you've had no experience with fasting whatsoever. It doesn't matter. We're going to go through it and we're going to talk about it and we're going to be transparent, look at the scripture. And then at the conclusion of this lecture, you and I, should be able to make a choice and a decision. How are we going to respond as far as fasting is concerned? So let's get into the lecture as we go. But before we do that, there's one scripture I wanted to share with you. Uh, somebody said to me the other day, or one day they said to me that uh, there's no instruction to fast and Jesus' disciples never fasted and those sort of things. So I wanted to share this scripture with you uh, that is found in Luke 5.33. They said to him, John's disciples, and they're saying this to Jesus, they said, John, John's disciples often fast and pray, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees, but yours go on eating and drinking. So they are accusing Jesus' disciples and saying, well, Jesus, your disciples are not fasting. Jesus answered them, can you make the guest of a bridegroom fast while he is with them? So he's saying, I'm with these guys currently, I'm on earth. And they seeing me every day. They're living with me. For three and a half years, he traveled with them. So he says, can, can you make them fast while, while the bridegroom is, 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 is there with them? And then he, uh, he concludes in verse 35. He says, but the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken away. So he's talking about his ascension. So he's saying that there will be a time when I'm not here. And he says, in those days, they will fast. So just if you had a question in your mind, if fasting is, is old covenant or new covenant, yet yeah, Jesus says, as soon as the ascension takes place, there will be this opportunity again for us to fast. 
and there are reasons why i mean fasting is not god punishing you um it is it is it is not dieting in jesus name so we need to get to the bottom of this fasting and understand it from a biblical perspective and that's what we're going to be doing today you know that's why i love this curriculum it is just so beautiful for me to see all the information in here and i was thinking the other day if you really do this first year qualification at heartbeat christian academy or anywhere else that that this uh, curriculum is presented i must say you've got a good foundation man you've got a good foundation because you will learn i mean in the previous sessions we learned on on, on finances now we're learning fasting and you will go through all the critical aspects and that's what i love about this so let's get into this lecture without any further ado now fasting and prayer and let's just look at this fasting and prayer in, in matthew 6 jesus says matthew 6 16 this is a second confirmation i've given you one already but this is a second co confirmation when jesus says when you fast okay so not if you fast not not if you if you like to fast not if it's convenient to fast uh, not if you decide to fast or if no he says when you fast so it actually means that that fasting is part of the christian life and i know there are people for medical reasons that can't fast that's no problem at all god knows that and uh, there are many preachers that have suggested in the past that there's alternative ways of fasting sometimes you fast television uh, you don't watch your favorite shows it's, it's a sacrifice that you make uh, there's something that's also been uh, very popular the past few years known as the daniel fast when you fast certain foods and and uh, you leave um, the the food that you really love you you sacrifice things, think things and as we go through this we will understand it uh, that uh, as we do things unto the lord we honor god with certain things then there, there, are, there are obviously some deviations to this so but it's it's uh, it's it's kind of like giving anything we give to god we have to purpose in our heart and it has to be cheerful it has to be a willing cheerful sacrifice and it's the same with fasting you don't want to <laughs> go into fasting kicking and screaming because your pastor's called the fast for the congregation and now you waking up in the middle of the night or or like m many of my friends that i know that that do the the, the muslim fast uh they uh you know they eat themselves uh, to blizzards after sunset at night they they really eat a lot and they some of them eating right through the night and then the morning before the sun rises they they have their last munch and then they they're fasting again for the day uh it is a it is sort of a more a compulsion fast where you are compelled to do it and this is not what god intended to be under the new covenant uh, you will notice in that scripture that i just shared in luke just after state making that statement he's talking about sowing the old patch uh we're sowing the new patch on the old garment so he's saying look guys you you can't con confuse the new covenant and the old covenant yeah and it's the same with fasting the fast yes it's still the same in terms of we physically denying ourselves food yes we are um, weakening our flesh yes it's still the same we are becoming more spiritual sensitive but because now under the new covenant we have the indwelling holy spirit we can even have better fasting experiences than they could ever have under the old covenant because we have the indwelling spirit and we are born again so we have a, a a rebirthed spirit where they didn't have that under the old covenant so when we fast it it really becomes like a million times more powerful because the spirit man is born again and the holy spirit lives within us and as we are breaking the flesh down and the flesh is dying and becoming less prominent and dominant in our lives the spiritual opens up more and because the fact of the fact that like i say under the new covenant we have the new garment so we're not going to put an old patch on here we have the new wine we are we are going to do everything in the newness of of christ we have very great capacity when we fast and we have very great opportunity when we fast so just wanted to share that with you so he talks about that and he also talks about uh, not doing a fast for public recognition so uh, don't go let people see you and say oh you know what um, 
uh, look, he's fasting or uh, you're walking around with a long face. And this isn't the purpose for fasting. The, the, the purpose for fasting is not what, what you would call religious piety or religious authority or looking very religious. That's not the reason why you're fasting. You're not fasting to prove yourself spiritually to people. And I've heard this before, brother, I've been on a 21 day fast and you should keep that to yourself if, if there's no purpose for sharing that because uh, this is what the Lord's actually saying in this verse. He says, don't, don't go and show everybody uh, that you are uh, fasting. And, and yet says it's interesting to note that the, the Jews fasted, that when the Jews fasted, they put ash on their heads. Um, so being, having ash on your head was associated with fasting, but washing the face and putting on oil on the head was associated with a joyous festival and celebration. So the Lord is saying here in the scripture to them, Guys, this is a joyous occasion. It's not like the old fast that they used to do in the old covenant where uh, they used to put the ash on the head and uh, it was a very physical thing. No, this is a very spiritual thing. Although in the old covenant, there's a lot of instances that fasting really moved um, the, the supernatural into place. But it's in the new covenant, it's, it's definitely a new garment and it's new oil. So when you fast and then the motivation to fast, some biblical examples of fasting, and you can read those scriptures, like I said, as a student of Heartbeat Christian Academy or Passion for Christ, it's your uh, duty to read the entire manual. And if you have a workbook to complete the workbook, and if you have online assessment to do that, that is not to punish you. It is for you to reap the benefit of this curriculum. Also, what I normally do personally is I read it a few times. It's not long. Most of the lectures are 9 to 10 to 12 pages, and it doesn't take that long to read. You can read that in 20 minutes. So if you have three lectures a week, you can really read those lectures quite frequently. And you will find as you read them through a second or a third time, you will find more things. So what I do when I facilitate the course, I'm just giving you some direction, some discussions. I will discuss some of the points and some of them we will not discuss. I won't read all the scriptures because you can read those scriptures yourself. So um, Jesus was, a, was an example and, and cited there uh, as a scripture is Luke 4 where he, he was fasting in the desert, uh, a portion of scripture that is commonly known as, as his temptation. And then also Paul, when, when, when Paul was uh, struck with blindness, he didn't eat for three days. So that's a reference. There's also references in Acts where they, they fasted. Um, yeah, even when Paul uh, was released in ministry, uh, it says, yeah, they fasted. Now, the, in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. They were ministering to the Lord and fasted. So, again, an indication that the early church fasted. And if they fasted, and they had this tremendous power, if you go read Acts, a lot of people say it's the Acts of the Apostles, but other theologians actually say, no, it's actually the Acts of the Holy Spirit, because you can see the Holy Spirit's power moved powerfully in the book of Acts. And yeah, you can see the lifestyle that they had. Uh, they definitely included fasting in that lifestyle. Um, and it says, as, as they were ministering before the Lord and they fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate for me Barnabas and Saul, which later became Paul, for the work to which I have called them. Uh, having fasted and prayed, they laid their hands. Again, the laying of the hands is also there on them. And they sent them away. So again, you can't say that there's no example of fasting uh, under the New Covenant and the New Testament scriptures. There's there's frequent reference to fasting. And uh, yet it just talks about uh, King Jehoshaphat. Now this is an interesting section of scripture. It's really stirred my heart many times because yet yeah, Je Jehoshaphat was totally outnumbered. He, he was under severe attack and imminent destruction was evident, so he wouldn't have made it. And uh, what he did is he, he, he declared a, a national fast. And you will see many times in the nation's history of Israel, when they got into deep problems or uh, significant decisions needed to be made, uh, fasting was actually a great tool that they used, if I can put it that way. It was something that they turned to. And I've actually seen this in my own life. 
that in a period when when our business was basically on on paper it was bankrupt we uh, we had a big uh, customer that owed us money and they couldn't pay us and it was over a million rand and i was looking at my at my figures and i saw that i wouldn't be able to actually make it uh, as a business i i was at that stage i mean i was reading my scripture and i was uh, doing bible study but not that frequently my my intimacy level with the lord wasn't that high and and that intense but what i did was i actually then decided i'm i'm going to go and fast because i wanted to gain spiritual victory uh, physically things looked very bad but i wanted to gain that spiritual victory and what i found was that i it actually opened a door for me to really fast quite regularly for for a few years even after that uh, we used to do quite long fasts and what i found was i would really become very spiritually sensitive uh, i i've got still notes in my diaries of uh, the days i fasted sometimes where i would have a revelation from god every single day the times when people would go and uh, and eat their food in the household i would uh, retreat to my study and i would pray and and i would just uh, make a prayer list um, ask god for specific things I, I i had a list of things and i would pray about certain things sometimes the fast would be for a specific reason where i would say god you know what i want to fast because i want more of your presence i want more of your power in my life i want more of your anointing in my ministry uh, there would be various reasons but uh, I would actually just, uh, you know, what happens with fasting is you are a spirit, you live in a body and you have a soul. Your soul is is, is the will, the mind, the emotions and the intellect and, and you renew that by the scripture, Romans 12. You can read Romans 12, 1, 2 and 3, I think, just about the renewing of the mind. But the natural man, uh, you know, the, the, the body is, is very strong and, and driven by the natural desires of the body of which food is probably one of the primary desires and what happens when we fast and and it's also here in, in the in the manual at some stages we go through a process where uh, initially our body goes into a bit of a shock situation now before i say this i just want to say that you need to actually uh, as a disclaimer you need to speak to your doctor uh, to your medical uh, physician so that you don't jump into a fast and, and, and you might have a medical condition or there might be a reason why you can't fast and then you say, I told you to fast. No, I'm saying you need to assess your, your medical condition and then you need to speak to your physician. And a lot of physicians will actually, uh, they will actually say fasting is good uh, and they will actually promote fasting. You, you get something even now called intermittent fasting where people are fasting a few days a week uh, it clears the body of toxins, it takes the, the stress off the organs that are constantly working, the digestive tract is improved. There, there's so many, and, and even if you're doing like a 21-day fast, I mean, you're losing 10 to 12 kgs, uh, maybe even more. Uh, and, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of things that, and I've even heard of, of um, I mean, medical journals and books talking about medical conditions being reversed because of, of people fasting. Now, this isn't obviously uh, some, something that, uh, that's the primary reason for the fast, but there are benefits to fasting way beyond just spiritual benefits. Uh, also, food addictions, when you're addicted to certain foods, when you fast, um, as you're fasting, those addictions are broken. And, and you then have an opportunity, as soon as you re-eat re or you start to eating again, you have an opportunity to actually then uh, not eat those foods again, especially like sugars, that's that's pretty addictive. And uh, another side note just is you, you need to actually read up on this. There are many, many books on fasting. Uh, uh, I know Jensen Franklin uh, is, is quite a renowned figure as far as the 21 day fast annually is concerned uh, from their ministry and he's got at least three books that i've read on fasting and many teachings on it and also a lot of practical advice on fasting so uh, you would supplement yourself with that what i actually do to be honest with you if i go on a fast and i i i, I believe that the lord said to me fast now i have to fast okay now the first few days are the worst especially day one you are hungry you just want to eat uh, if you've had a bad diet in the past you you get headaches and, and and you feel it's not good 
And then the, sometimes even with the poisons withdrawing, you can have a bit of body aches and pains and stuff like that. If you're working, it's sometimes difficult to retain energy. Uh, you need to drink a lot of water and ensure that you are uh, remain hydrated with water and and just uh, spend time in prayer. And I want to say this too. If you are not praying, if you are not reading the word, but you are fasting, and you are working in an environment where uh, you know things are going wrong and, and you are working with customers and working with this and people are shouting and swearing and, and this is what you're having sort of as the base of your fast. You actually, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, uh, it's it's not worth it. Uh, it has to be a, a really a spiritual experience where you've made a decision. You might have a reason why you fast. You might just fast to be closer to God or as a spiritual discipline. And then you you start entering into this, but you need to be able to take time apart in retreat and, and just spend time in prayer and in the Word. If you don't do that, it's not going to work well. And then what happens is after day three, four, it starts getting better. You know, it really starts getting better. By day five, six, in most cases, uh, you don't get that hungry anymore. You just feel the weakness of your body because now your body is no longer burning uh, fast feels so so the, the stuff that you eat the, the high carbohydrates and the protein and stuff that you eat uh, that's fast f fast feel so that burns fast and you feel that energy boost but when your body starts burning your body's reserves which is fat then um, obviously you you get a bit of a lag so they they, they are very as uh, like they call it the sweet spots there's a sweet spot in fasting. Some people get it at day seven where they just feel they're never going to eat again. Some people get it at day five or six, but it's this process. And then very, very important is when, if you fasted for more than two to three days, when you actually start decide or you feel that you're going to eat again, then it is critical that you don't eat solid food. And listen to me because I've done this before. And I've been very, very sick um, b because of it. And I actually know of people that have died. Uh, and I've heard of people that have died because of eating solid food after an extended fast. Because the body's digestive sy system semi-shuts down and, and, and everything has to start up again. And if you are eating fast and hard uh, and solid food, uh, you're going to get into trouble. That's just some practical things that I wanted to mention at this stage. But let me tell you, uh, you can really do a study of this. Uh, you can, uh, uh, I've read a few books. We have quite a few books in the library. We've got some ebooks. So if you need information, more information on fasting, then contact us. We can uh, give you access to information uh, that I believe uh, will be a blessing to you in that sense. So, uh, yeah, the victory was the nation had a victory and the lord gave them a strange instruction he told them to actually send the the um the singers in front so they weren't even supposed to to go and fight or, or arm the army or run away no the lord gave them direction a lot of times when we're fasting and praying we do that specifically for direction uh, the right mental attitude just refers as you need to test your motives when you fast. Like I said, you're not, you're not fa 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 fasting to impress people. Uh, you are fasting to get closer to God. You are fasting to glorify God. You, you will pray and you will lift the name of the Lord up during that fast. Uh, I discussed the process of the fast now with you. And, and in, this, in the manual or the course guide, uh, it does talk here about what Yankee Chow says in terms of their fasting. Um, so you can read through that um, and then also uh, you know the, there's practical results that that comes from fasting um, and and also spiritual results you can read Isaiah 58 verse 6 and 7 um, and there it just refers to loosing the bands of wickedness undoing heavy burdens uh, setting the oppressed free and uh, breaking every yoke and like I said there's a lot of physical yokes like overeating and and uh, food addictions and stuff like that that can also be broken uh, and it could put you into the right mode to be able to actually take control of your life 
A lot of people, when you lose control of your life, totally lose control, you're out of control, um, you're battling, you don't know what to do. Sometimes a fast is a good idea just to refocus and to really sharpen the sword so that you are ready for the enemy. Uh, also forgiveness and healing. Uh, a lot of times you will, uh, you will hear the Lord say as you are busy fasting that there are things that you don't know about that are in your subconscious mind uh, that you might think that are not there and it might be bitterness, resentment or unforgiveness and the Lord will reveal certain things to you uh, so that you can get into the power areas of the Lord. So as I said, we don't have the opportunity here to really go into every aspect of fasting. This is one lecture in a course. So, But if you want to know more about that, there's a lot of material and especially if you're the if you decide to go on a long period fast and you feel that the Lord's leading you into a fast, a time of prayer and fasting, then I would suggest that you, you use those supplementary materials that I mentioned. And like I say, we have them uh, in the library, so you don't necessarily have to go pay 300 Rand for a book or an audio book. We've got access to that. So you just join the library. There's no cost involved and you can uh, utilize that material. Uh, the second part, like I mentioned, that we're going to be talking about is just the meditating in prayer. And meditation is a is a is a very dangerous word because um, it is uh, much associated with the Eastern religions. So when you say I'm going to go meditate, people freak out. They say, "Oh, what are you occultist or involved in something?" No, you know, meditation did not come from from the from the uh, false religions. It, it came from God. It's, it's a way that we as, as a spirit being can focus in on the spiritual aspects and then hear from the spirit. And uh, if there's examples in the scripture of this, so it's, it's not uh, that, that, we, you know, that we, we didn't see this in Genesis. You know, we, we see how Enoch was actually walking with God to the point where he actually, he was taken. So, a lot of times when it comes to prayer and, and if you are in a, in a, in a prayer and, and you are fasting and that sort of thing, it's critical for you not to just pray and, 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 um, and just speak all the time. You know, where, where you just continue to speak, you're petitioning, you're making requests. There must be a time when you meditate upon scripture. And what I find personally is sometimes if I read a portion of scripture a few times, and then I just sit and I meditate on it. Then I, I allow the Holy Spirit to speak to me, to open up my ears so that I can hear what is going on in the spiritual. And then the Lord starts speaking to me. So in this manual, you can read, read sorry, read, you can read that section on meditation and, and just read it and read those scriptures. Um, you know, talking about getting quiet before the Lord. Uh, enjoying God's presence. There's this enjoyment. There is the, uh, you know, the scripture that I referred to in Genesis 5, uh, 22, where in a walk with God, 300 years. And it says there, um, and Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. So, you know, he really meditated and he was in the presence uh, uh, of the Lord to a point where he was actually, uh, you know, transferred into the spirit straight away so when we're talking about what we're talking about yeah i mean if, if we look at at the at at the discussions that we're having i mean we were talking about your personal devotion so we were talking about you know you need to have a, a devotional prayer life uh, when we talk about forms of prayer you need to see if you can have some family devotional time you need to see if you can pray in your church and just how you do that we spoke about those things we spoke about prayer in the home cells and uh, you know in in midweek services uh, prayer meetings at homes when people get together special prayer meetings for special purposes those sort of things then prayer retreats where you know you would go into a solitary place and and you could combine obviously these you can combine them with then fasting even your all-night prayer meetings that can be combined with fasting and prayer. And it can also be combined with waiting on the Lord and medita meditation and prayer and just enjoying God's presence. And I would say even for me, uh, although, you know, you, you need to do uh, obviously proper prayer and that sort of thing. But I would say for myself, I have found that even worship uh, ties in well because when I was fasting, 
I would actually, uh, you know, a lot of times, especially when I get very, very hungry and I get very tired, I would, I would actually come into my study with, and I would take my guitar and I would worship for a period, read some scripture for a period, sit and meditate on that scripture and then start praying and, uh, you know, you know, and, and, and just find that flow of the Holy Spirit. And it was never, it was never always the same, exactly the same. And I think that is what a lot of people where they go wrong, they try and looking for a specific method and say, you know what, I want to do it the same every time. It doesn't work like that. Just imagine if you had a relationship with somebody and you ended up having a, a little card in your pocket that you took out and whenever you met this person it might be your wife or your partner or a friend or even your children whenever you met this person you would grab this thing out and look at the high highlights on your points and then start talking from the point thing always the same or try and variate it a bit and today you start at the bottom and tomorrow you start in the middle it doesn't work like that in relationship the entire re reason Jesus came and he died on the cross uh, was so that we could have that intimate relationship. Remember, the high priest could only enter into the sanctuary once a year. God's presence was hidden in the, in the most holy place. So man could not enter in. Even those who approached the mountain, if they didn't approach it correctly, they would die and they were not allowed to go up the mountain. Currently, we are in a very, very fortunate situation where we can have this intimacy with God and we can look at devotional time at home and devotional time in the mornings early and all of that. And we can look at fasting a few days and all of these things should be the joy of our salvation as we enter into a deeper relationship and deeper intimacy with God. It's not religious action. It's relational uh, a relational flow, a relational outflow of our love. That is where we get it wrong. Even the Pentecostal Christians, a lot of times uh, we get that wrong. We try and religiously implement a lot of these things. Even when it comes to fasting, we think of it and, and we think it's painful. But if you study the benefits of fasting and you look at that, then it makes it much less painful and you're looking at, you know what, like in the first lectures we spoke about the motivation to pray, you start looking and you say, you know what, you know what, I want to fast because I, I know that, yes, I, I will not sit in front of the TV the whole day when I fast. I will miss all my television shows because I'm going to go and pray. I'm going to read my Bible. Uh, yes, I will, I will miss my favorite food and maybe if the family has some pizza, I won't be able to have that. Yes, that, that is, there, there are some losses in the natural. But what am I gaining in the spiritual? Not because I'm twisting God's arm. No, because I'm, I'm uh, literally deafening my body. I don't want to say killing it, but literally deafening the voice of the natural to be able to hear from the supernatural. And that is the difference. So we don't want to teach a, a methodic method of doing this and doing that. We want to say, this is how the scripture speaks about certain things. And this is how we interpret those things theologically. Now, let's get into a relationship with God and then start flowing with these things from our spirit. Uh, walking in the spirit, not in the flesh. We can't go back to the law of rules and regulations that we are governed by a set of rules and regulations. We have to be spirit-led. Remember Romans 8, those that are led by the spirit, they are the children of God. So if you want your prayer life to fire up, if you want to experience the power areas of the Holy Spirit in those areas, you need to do that from the Holy Spirit's dimension, not from your own. After completing the session, you should be able to choose to fast and pray and enjoy the spiritual benefits of doing so. And then practice the skill of meditating and prayer. So meditating, meditating on God, meditating on His Word, meditating on His blessing, meditating on His goodness, meditating on His testimony and what He has done in your life. You're meditating on those things. You're expelling all the negative thoughts. You're expelling fear. You're expelling what the enemy is trying to do in your mind and and you are just moving into a deeper relationship with God and as you do that you start accessing the joy of his presence and then enjoying his presence now I hope this has been informative for you 
And uh, this ends off lecture three, which is the forms of prayer. And next lecture, we are going to be looking at the methods, part one. So I hope you tune in for lecture four, where we talk about the methods of prayer. And God bless you.